Welcome back to Introduction to Reading Tibetan. We're learning a little bit about how to read a Tibetan text. Um, and we're using the Refuge and Heart of Awakening or Refuge and Bodhicitta prayer to do so. So we talked about the four line shloka structure of the text and last time we looked at line one. So now, now line two, which is the completion of part A in the two part structure A and B. Okay, so again, first we will spell, then we'll read, then we'll analyze. So line two, Bayata Jana Jong. Cha Shabku Chu Ba Chu Ba Ra Bar Da Shabku Du Ba O Da Ga Dak Na Giguni Sakata Kayata Kya Ba Sa Kya Sa Shabku Su Ma O Cha Gigu Chi. That was the spelling. Now I'll read it. Jong Chu Bar Du Dak ni kyab su chi jong chu bardu dak ni kyab su chi the way the meter works one two three four five six seven eight nine the tibetan's love of the two syllable unit is uh manifested here and uh over and over again okay so jong chu the word we have highlighted at the beginning which means enlightenment. Jong means purified and chub means perfected. So the concept of enlightenment is very, very similar to the concept of a Buddha, right? Um, Buddha, you know, was um, something like um, cleansed or woken up and gay blossom develop. Here we have purified and perfected. Um, so really parallel, right? Okay, and then bardu means until. So jungchu bardu is until enlightenment. Okay, and then the next word is dak, I, and it's followed by the particle ni. So jungchu bardu dak ni. So dak ni, dak means I or me. And it's really unusual for it to be stated when it means a first person pronoun, like I or me. The same word can also mean atman or self or ego. Um, but it's unusual that, that they write it down in a prayer. Usually the first person pronoun I or we is just assumed in the Tibetan prayer. But here they specifically write it down. And the particle coming after it, ni, is usually called a topic marking particle. But it can have the effect of emphasizing the preceding word. And I think that's what's happening here. It's like we're stating a claim almost. I'm going to do something, you know. And whatever it is I'm going to do, I'm going to do it until enlightenment, right? And then I'm going to do it in the Buddha Dharma and Supreme of Communities. Okay, so then we come to the last part. Kabsu Chi is a three-part verb. This is really, really common. Verbs come at the end in Tibetan. And in order to make the meter work, it's very common to see a three-part verb at the end. There's a number of ways that they're created. But this one um, is very, very common. Kab means refuge. Su is a particle that's synonymous with law, so it can mean to, in, for, etc. And then chi is the verb that means go. So kyab su chi is what I call a three part verb, go for refuge. So line two is until enlightenment, I go for refuge. And I'm like making a, a stand with this position, right? So the I is emphasized. So I'm I'm taking refuge until enlightenment. And then one and two fit together to make part A in the end of line one, in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. So if you want to take it from the top down, you've got in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, until enlightenment, I go for refuge. And that's our part A.